I can the metaphor lecture. Yes. And um, you know, I mean, I I totally agree with what you said in in the notes and um, in your evaluation in your submission to Teach Now platform. Um, I do wish. I think overall, yeah. I mean, I I think I did a good job. Uh, going deep about uh, the poem, you know, I, I probably maybe went too deep, you know, do they really know to know what quatrains are or whatever, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, and uh, so I have to kind of make it more student centered and, uh, but, uh, and, and also the use the learn to use Blackboard, collaborate, like the poem function. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. <clears throat> So I just kind of wrote down what I was thinking as I was viewing the lesson. Um, and I think it was great that you started with a student welcome and you use their specific names, mm -hmm. which is a good example of how I'm sure you are already in the classroom and how you plan to be. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's good to check audio. You, you know, you said, can you hear me? And mm -hmm. a, another thing you could say, Hey, give me a space if you can hear me or, yeah. Give me a thumbs up or, you know, just something like that. Right. Um, <clears throat> I think that you, I'm, I'm starting to see what I believe is a, a characteristic um, voice and personality of you coming through that I think is um, dry and funny and clever. Um, that, like you have the black tie definition of metaphor. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, the po poetry can be nice smelling or metaphor. I don't know. I just think that's a great yeah. clever way to share a bit of your own right. personality. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's, maybe that's the Eastern European in you. I don't know. Yeah. Um, we're not, we're not, <laughs> we're not encouraged. The dry sense of humor is, um, yeah, the humor is, <clears throat> yeah, it's always, uh, humor in my country came from oppression Mm -hmm. So it was like always like, you know, j jokes were always like um, kind of way of expressing frustration mm -hmm. with the political situation. So it was always like a critical, I, I don't know if that comes from that or just because I, I remember somebody, a former classmate in eighth grade saying like, we reconnected over Facebook, she was, she, she, should mention how my, my sense of humor was sort of acidic or <laughs> I, <clears throat> Yeah, oh, those are both good. I think that's good for high school, too. But I'm also goofy. Uh, I just don't really, maybe, yeah. Well, you can be goofy if you want when you're in there in Blackboard. Um, but I, I, I do think that in general, the way you're coming across is definitely as a human with a specific point of view that um, I think your students will enjoy when they get to have you every single day when okay. you're in a more normal situation. Mm -hmm. um, and <clears throat> the, I loved on the, the simplified definition slide how you got the kids to participate um, at the end. <clears throat> excuse me. Um, and uh, just in general, like the beauty is truth slide, when you said, does that make sense um, to them about, you know, what um, he was saying, maybe, you know, you could change it to like, type in the chat box, mm -hmm. give an example of, of what you think the poet means or what, you know, what you think the beauty of life oh. is or the pain yeah, of life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then the participation on reading the poem, and I'm sure you noticed those tricky kids they set themselves as a way as soon as they hear you or other instructors um, say, okay, you're going to be reading aloud now. Um, and then after the poem was done being read aloud, they were all mysteriously not away anymore. Um, yeah. So they all kind of hate talking. Well, most of them. I know you have one good participator. Yeah, um, yeah. But if there are ways to get around this um, idea of them not wanting to read aloud, I mean, I don't know, I suppose... Um, Sometimes the only thing to do is to have something read aloud, but continue to think about, you know, the ways um, of having them participate, um, like you did with that table at the end, too. 
Um, and I wrote, you don't patronize them. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> yeah. And, and how you were saying maybe that the lesson was too elevated or do they really need to know what a quatrain is? Um, and I say, yes, they do need to know what a quatrain is. Yeah. And I think that you're approaching this um, from a higher level uh -huh. and that you are setting an expectation without even really spelling it out. And even if they aren't always meeting the expectation, I see them trying mm -hmm. and they want to make comments and they're, they're stretching themselves there. And so I mm -hmm. think that is really important. You are mm -hmm. not spoofing them and you're, you're saying like, this is higher level stuff and guess what? You're going to do it. And they, they're like, Oh, okay. I guess this is what I'm doing now. So oh. I think that, <clears throat> I think that's very um, effective and impressive. And I think you have the, the gravitas, but also the underlying warmth to pull that off and to pull them into it. Oh, that's so nice. Thank you so much. I it's my pleasure. It's true. <laughs> yeah, I, I, am, uh, I am my worst critic. So I, yeah, well. Or, I mean, I, I, uh, I vacillate between, you know, thinking, oh, I'm so great. And I was like, oh, my God. What have yeah. I <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. If only there were a happy medium. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, someday. Yeah. I'm okay. But in general, I mean, I think it's um, it's patently obvious that you you're experienced and comfortable, and uh, in terms of as an educator, as an instructor, and uh, that makes it all much easier. I think. Um, because you have the the natural authority already. Yeah, yeah it's taken me a long time. Mm -hmm. For sure. Uh, 